I've um, <clears throat> essentially just had three weeks off building. Um, not three weeks off. We've run out of money, so had to go back to work, and um, I've organised a essentially a two week on, one week off roster from now on. So I hope that it's going to take um, no more than four more full weeks to build, four or five weeks. So yeah, times times three. That's about three months or so. So. Hopefully this will be finished in three months, but yeah. Still got a lot to do, but a lot of shit's arrived. Solar's here, full solar setup here is here. Fresh gray, gray water tank is here. Um, yeah, getting there, starting to come together. Timon is dead, aka Papa, removed the outside stainless steel locking handles and all the associated hardware. He then cut them down to size, and with the help of a jig to keep them straight, welded them back together so we could refit them back on the inside of the rear doors. He welded the catches to a bit of square tubing and welded them to the roof and floor respectively so we can open and close Mowgli from the inside. Then it was back to the windows. We then attach the kitchen windows to the reveals. Check out this little fella. I didn't even see him. While Timon was working on our first window install, I continued with the wall battens. Timon marked about five centimeters inside from the edge of the steel frame, drilled some pilot holes, and started cutting the biggest hole we have ever cut in Mogues. When you cut a big hole in the side of your house for the first time, you're gonna be scared. We made sure everything fit nicely. Check out our view though. With a heap of Sikaflex on the inside of the aluminium, Timon set the window and fixed the window to the aluminium with about a hundred roofing screws. He Sikaflexed as much of the space between the shims as we could and drove screws through the outer frame into the reveals. Hey, it's dinner time. <laughs> Come inside, try and stop playing. Finish the window. It's dinner time. <laughs> A &E. what have you been doing? Where have you just come from, firstly? I just got home from the A&E. <laughs> How come you're an A&E? Because there was a bit of metal on my eyeball <laughs> right in the middle at four o'clock apparently and um, yeah they put some numbing drops in and then used a needle and scraped the front of my eyeball and got the bit of metal off and then they scraped all the rust off but might invest in um, a pair of goggles. <laughs> it looks like the safety sunnies aren't cutting it clearly. Or maybe they are cutting it. <laughs> um, it was totally painless though. It was. I was freaking out a little bit beforehand, but I didn't feel the absolute thing. It was. It was quick too. Doctor was awesome. <laughs> and how Thanks, long, doctor. How long? How long was it in your eye for? 
like two days <laughs> <laughs> and a half, no, probably like three now. Is that why I had rust on it? <laughs> <laughs> You're rusty. <laughs> you done? Okay. We got down to Aladala and finished off the walls and roof battens. At this point, we're living, working, and building on the road, so we decided to free up a bit of space by installing the solar panels. Each of these are 240 watt panels. We just jumped up on, on the roof just to uh, configure the, the solar panels, and essentially that's how they're gonna lie. This is how they're gonna, gonna lie on the roof of Day two of the solar panels. Hey baby. <laughs> um, I just want to show you our crack den. No, don't put it on The panels are bolted to aluminium L brackets and the L brackets are sicker to the root of Moe's. We wanted to steer clear of holes in the roof if we could. Solar panels are so heavy. Um, this was not one of my easier assists. And now I'm on to the cargo hatches. I'm a little bit nervous because I measured the dimensions and I gave them to the aluminium place to weld up this thing and the other side, um, the opening. Yeah, uh, I, I gave them the exact dimensions. I didn't leave any room, any room to actually fit it in. So they're the exact size of the cutout. So I'm, I think I'm gonna need to cut them and weld them. I don't have any way of welding aluminium, so I'll have to take it to somebody. But um, I'm just really hoping that. <laughs> That I can just bash them in um, and they've got a little bit of give or maybe they've been out of mill or something but anyway more holes more holes in the truck oh, shit. Shit. so I'm at Bunnings and I get this message I've made a hole <laughs> made a hole it's filling with water he made a hole in Mowgli. Yeah, it's so scary when you put a hole, especially a big one, in the truck. But also, it's the most exciting part because you can see so much progress. So it just turns from a wall to a door. And how did you get that frame? How did you get the frame? I got the frame made at an aluminium place. So it fits, I just need to cut here so that's flush. And um, and then stick it in. So this is where we're gonna put our surfboard. So it's gonna, oh, there's gonna be a door that opens up and we slide our boards in so we can access them from outside. They don't need to come inside the house. And we'll put green carpet down, make a little rack and... To free up more space, we installed one of our Max Air Vans. So much for no holes in the roof. Um, so, from this video, I think um, we wanted to elaborate on a few little things. Um, one was the running out of money. We we did run out of money, but it was so quickly. It was quick, but we bought really a big ticket items straight off the bat. Um, we were a little bit naive with how long things would take, and um, we wanted to be moving in straight away and getting getting going. So. We bought the fridge, we bought the oven, we bought a little fireplace. What other big things did we buy? Yeah, we paid for the windows um, and the full solar setup and just everything, everything that was going in, um, I 
had the money for and I bought and then we ran out of money and and also everything took so much longer yeah. and so much more expensive so um, we ended up just dragging around like it took a while for me to fully like you haven't seen it yet but I've only installed the solar panels and took a very long time to sort of get all these things in mm -hmm. um, especially uh, I'll um, I'll put a little picture of what Moog's looks like <laughs> when we're on the road. It's just absolutely um, shanty, super shanty town. It's pretty funny looking back because we were like, yeah, it's going to take, I think, six weeks to finish. Yeah, also. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it took us a whole lot longer than that. Yeah, it took us ages. Um, another thing with this uh, last video was we got the tr the the shell, the truck um, welded to the frame by uh, welded to the tray. Sorry, by NPS Trucks in Sydney. Um, I wouldn't recommend them. They he's done um, a pretty good job, but um, I wouldn't recommend him for a couple of reasons. One, he couldn't understand putting the latches on the inside so I could open it from the inside. He just couldn't understand that. And um, and the whole process, he was super condescending and eventually just talked me out of doing something like that. And he and then I just, I had to just go, just do whatever you have to do. And it took me like two or three days to, um, to move those latches to the inside. So that was just like a little bit of waste of time when I, when they could have done that themselves. And um, another thing that this guy wanted to do was he wanted to put his own sort of suspension system in that was um, from the chassis to the tray of the truck. And um, I ended up going, I ended up trying to sell the tray and taking it down to Ben at Mog Central. And I was about to take it off there. And he's like, why are you taking this off? And I said, oh, cause old mate wants to put on his own tray. And he goes, don't do that. He goes, the, the tray and the, the suspension system that's with the tray to the chassis at the moment, he goes, that's the way it's designed. And he goes, if you're going to put something on top, just weld it. He goes, don't let him do that, to do it that way. Um, so so the, you, Unimogs have a really unique kind of chassis. So um, the wheels kind of, the wheels kind of move um, in sync with, how would you explain that? The wheels well, move in a, sync with the, the um, it's, it's called a tension torsion bolt, bolt or something like that. Essentially through underneath the tray, um, it's got a skewer bolt that goes through the middle. Um, and that, essentially allows the whole uh, chassis and truck and tray to articulate and move around a lot better when it's full driving. Um, ben from Mog Central said that if you let him do what he wanted to do, um, that'll just, it'll just break straight away because it's not designed to be um, engineered like that. And uh, I almost had to be in an argument with this guy that I was paying $14,000 for um, to get him to just weld the, like just to do it my way. And it wasn't like, it was creating a lot less work for them, which he didn't, and then I'll, and then, and then it ended up being the same price. Anyway, so the, it, it ended up coming out pretty good, but, um, but would I recommend them? Nope. Um, and yeah, and then now the solar's, now the solar's on the roof, that's pretty exciting. It's sort of hard having the solar on the roof. I remember at this point it was hard having the solar on the roof and knowing that the sun's hitting the solar and it's not connected mm. to anything. I thought that was a bit of a waste, but yeah. Um, I think the other thing that the video highlighted is that we started to make a few holes in the truck and it was scary because we really wanted to make sure this thing was watertight. We didn't want water getting in anywhere when it rained. Um, so, we had to make sure we made the holes right and made sure they were well sealed once they were made. So um, that's really governed a few of our decisions. Yeah, I'm not actually sure what's up on the next video. Um, I think I finish off the garage doors and possibly even start the floor. Um, and I know, I know the, the rest of what I call the brains of Moogs, which is sort of like all your charge controller and your inverter and all that kind of stuff. Um, so the brains, I think we get started on the brains either in this video or the next video. So if you're an electricity nerd, you will love it. <laughs>
<laughs> They're out there. <laughs> um, or if you're just a DIY off-grid enthusiast, you might like it as well. Um, enjoy. Like and subscribe. Yeah, if you got to the end of this video, you probably liked it. So press the like button, subscribe, and... Uh... Write comments and ask questions too. Like, we, we've learned so much, and it'd be so good to be able to share that, that knowledge with people. Um, yeah, we'd like to hear your feedback too. Cool, catch ya. Where are you going? Paper boy, riding your bike today.